Hi everyone and welcome to your first Facebook lecture in this series uh, at George Brown College, which is Facebook Marketing Week 1, and this week is really an introduction. This week's goals are really just to meet each other. So we're in an online learning space and that means that we need to find creative digital ways to come together, to learn, to support each other, and to expand our knowledge of Facebook marketing. So I want to start with making sure we all get really good introductions of who we all are. I want to find out what your interest in Facebook marketing is and I want to make sure that you're comfortable with me, your instructor Amanda, uh, in knowing who I am, what expertise I bring to the table, and how you can best get in contact with me over these next seven weeks. Part of the way you're going to get to know me is by watching my quick five minute snapshot. So each week I'm going to record either a video or audio snapshot, sort of like lecture light, if you want to call it, uh, where you can get a summary of what I would say to you if I was framing this lecture in person. Um, because I always hear that online what we think about some of the learning is we feel a disconnect between the instructor and the students when we're missing that class component. So I'm going to do my best in this class to recreate that for you uh, by giving you a lecture light summary each week uh, in addition to this fuller video lecture. So this week, my expectations is that you will uh, introduce yourself to the class, make sure that you review the course outline and the expectations and figure out that Blackboard thing. Uh, review Facebook as a core feature, uh, Facebook course feature, so brand page event group that we're going to go through in a few minutes. And then, most importantly, decide what it is you're going to build over the next seven weeks. And I'll come to this in more detail near the end of this lecture, so stay tuned for that. Before we get started, I feel like we can't get into Facebook and dive deep for seven straight weeks, 21 hours of Facebook, and not talk about where it started. And it started not with Facebook, but with the Facebook. And if you took social media marketing, you've seen some of this intro components before. But generally speaking, Facebook started as a network specifically targeting university and college students. You might remember that if you've seen the social network film, uh, it was born out of Harvard. Uh, you had to have a, a school email address to join, so at Ryerson, for example. Um, you couldn't get in if you didn't have an email address. Now, of course, if you uh, were a staff or faculty member, as I was when Facebook launched at, at Western, uh, you could get in with your staff ID as long as you had some sort of validation um, through your email address. Much later, of course, now we know it is as the billion active users that are in it expanding this massive, massive environment where uh, where anybody is connecting and it has nothing to do with being a student at all. Facebook in its beginning stages had, in its 2004 launch had this network, had a rep for being the party photos network, right? Uh, because if you remember, we were sort of communicating through our social networks in chat form before Facebook. We were on MSN, we were on ICQ, uh, we might have been getting into blogs, but probably not really. Uh, maybe we were changing our MSN names and, and active name IDs to song lyrics. Uh, I certainly was because I'm a huge uh, social networking nerd, I guess. Um, and the 2004-2005 version of Facebook was before parents, it was before limited profiles, and to our uh, focus here in class, it was before brands and advertising. Did you realize that actually brands didn't hit that Facebook scene until 2007, which means we had three years of, some would say glorious, others would say sad and lonely social network without all of that advertising opportunity. Uh, it was in 2007 where we started to see the brand page, uh, but it was started as a company profile. And this new language of fans instead of friends emerged. Uh, and now we have following and subscriptions and all these other new languages. Uh, what was so interesting is in the first, for the first two years of brand presence on Facebook, brands couldn't communicate in the daily newsfeed, in the, the status updates. There were no 
posts. Uh, pages didn't actually get a wall until 2009. Instead, you had to drive conversation to a discussion board, which was sort of a separate tab on the Facebook page. Um, and then out of those pages emerged all kinds of weird third-party stuff like boxes where you could customize and add a brand box to your page. And it really degraded the simplicity and uniformity of the Facebook profile at a user level. And so we saw boxes sort of come quickly, mess up Facebook, mess up the design. Everybody had their own individual profiles instead of just the image. And Facebook said, no, 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 we need to standardize the way the profile looks and is laid out. And we'll just let people customize their cover photo and their profile, which is what we saw much later. When cruising the history of old Facebook things that came and went, uh, Beacon is one that's relevant to the study of marketing and Facebook. Uh, what Beacon was now today seems obvious, uh, but at the time was actually really irritating to Facebook users. Beacon was this model of... Uh, tracking users' cookies and some of the work that they did or so anywhere that a user went on the internet with uh, their Facebook use. And so say if you were um, looking up recipes on epicurious.com, Facebook wanted to share that information out with your fa with your friends. So, you know, Jay just added the green tea whiskey punch recipe to his epicurious.com and I'm going to share that out with my friends. Uh, What's so interesting is the first version of Beacon was opt out, not opt in. So we got the stories of the guy that, you know, bought an engagement ring on a website and they were tracking his cookies. And then that that activity was shared automatically on his wall and his girlfriend found out he was going to propose. Uh, the opt out, not opt in model really put people on edge about brands and Facebook. And it's relevant today. Because even today, when we start to look at applications and the way that you use the open ID on Facebook to sign in and grant Facebook account to your friends list, grant Facebook access to your friends list, uh, to your profiles, and, and then Facebook then shares that information with third party brands, we start to really think about the, the way that brands are expected to respect privacy. Uh, while also making it really easy for us to share that information. So like, of course, I want to share this Globe and Mail article that I that I read and thought interesting in one click. And I want that to be simple, but I don't want Globe and Mail to then send me an email marketing, um, I don't know, a month subscription based only on recipe articles, because that's what I share on Facebook. That then seems too creepy. Um, so we there's a level of information sharing that we feel comfortable with and some that we are concerned with. And that all was born around Beacon, which was in the very first, uh, very first phase of Facebook brand presence. Uh, a fun quiz if you want to look it up if you're curious. Um, how often Facebook has been redesigned uh, and how many times Facebook releases a new update. Um, take a quick second and Google it. You'll find that to be very interesting. All right, well, enough history. Facebook today. For our purposes in this marketing class, uh, business.facebook.com is going to become your best friend and a place that you need to live and breathe. Uh, so if you haven't created an account there, I would definitely encourage you to do that as part of this week's work. Um, but the Facebook business platform is almost a completely separate app and really, really helpful if you want to work on brands and interact with either agencies or contract employees or even different colleagues, but not necessarily interact, uh, uh, integrate your your business life and your marketing life with your personal profile. So you can create a Facebook business ID from any email. In my case, I'm using my own firm, Bene Lavoro, and then manage and administer pages and have this in no way connect to your personal profile. It doesn't use your profile image. It's not pulling that name. It's not connected. Your friends don't see when you're updating to a page. Um, so we really are seeing this true separation. Uh, we're seeing different uh, billing accounts now. So you can attach uh, an ad account, put a credit card in with that, and do all of your transactions. You can also do all of your page posting. And you don't have to worry that you're accidentally posting onto your major bank employer's Facebook page that you are so excited to spend the day day drinking on your patio. Wouldn't that be lovely? Um, so uh, 
Facebook business console, Facebook business platform is really a great way to work with ads. You can work with agencies here. You can also manage any different separate projects uh, and overall campaigns that really is going to become important as we move forward. Another thing that's really important in today's current state Facebook is that Facebook isn't really Facebook, is it? Facebook is a family now uh, that has a whole bunch of different apps and and tools. We've got Facebook groups um, going from left to right, Facebook groups. We've also got WhatsApp, uh, the mobile chatting platform that they acquired uh, a few years ago. Facebook itself with 1.4 billion users. Billion with a B, my friends. We have the Messenger app, uh, this sole chatting platform that used to live within Facebook that now absolutely lives outside of Facebook. Facebook's really driving those chats or private messages to a separate app. And then Instagram, which sort of surprised me that the number was 300 million users uh, reported by Zuckerberg in March because uh, I, in a lot of ways, have been arguing Instagram is the new Facebook. Uh, but what's funny is Instagram isn't the new Facebook. Face Instagram is the Facebook. Uh, they're all together. And part of... Uh, over looking at all of the different apps that Facebook owns, um, we're going to integrate some some Instagram learning into this course because I think Instagram is really important when you start to think about how do you build a brand's presence, uh, what do ads look like, what does content and images look like, especially image driven content for brands. Uh, when you're going to all of that work to put it out on Facebook, you should also have it on Instagram, especially um, if your audience. Uh, meets with with Instagram's core audience which is primarily youth but but not entirely so we will walk through Instagram but for this week we're staying at the top line Facebook to make sure everybody has an open language for what Facebook is and uh, and how we're going to use it from a marketer or brand perspective so let's start at the core of the Facebook which is the profile um, as I said, so we got rid of things like boxes and application tabs and all this third-party stuff that messed up the overall approach to the Facebook profile. And now we have a beautiful, simple timeline approach. There's a cover photo at the top, full bleed image, really beautiful place for people to express their creativity. The standard profile photo, that's the thumbnail square image that we see in the news feed and in any sort of comment or reply box. Um, up at the top above the fold, if you will, of your cover photo uh, is where you can manage your settings. Uh, you can also manage your friend list. If you don't have separate lists to be curating content by list, I would encourage you to play with that. Um, I use it for my daughter, making sure that I'm only sharing images of her as a baby out to specific close friends and family with those lists and that it doesn't go up publicly. Um, yes, I also have a George Brown student list. Um, there is the sort of about summary that used to take, used to really be the front and center component of the Facebook profile that now has been uh, shrunken down to to short bulleted overview list of the relationship that you're in. We're still seeing that, um, the location, your work and employers and your education. What's so interesting is the profile and its beautiful simplicity with the gorgeous cover photo and uh, and thumbnail profile photo has been carried over into the brand page. So I loved when brands were able to have this big cover photo, right? If we look back at those older images of the first brand page that didn't have a news feed, I mean, we were dealing with one small little uh, thumbnail picture. Now we get the full cover photo just like users do. Um, through the business manager or business console, we now, that's where we're accessing insights or analytics. I used to be able to do this directly from the brand page, but now we've moved, uh, Facebook's moving us over into the, the business console, which is good because it keeps you separate. Um, we have events that's separate from what a user has as the quick events tab. Uh, and then the overview, that same really short summary that the user has in their about profiles and hyperlinking their events, hyper, or sorry, hyperlinking their city, hyperlinking their um, education. We see that same approach for an overview of a brand page in terms of how many people liked this page uh, and, and the short summary and URL. So we see the same exact layout 
We still have apps, but you'll notice that where apps used to be above the fold, we're now seeing that push down to the left-hand side of the profile page below information in the overview. So where apps used to be important, where we would you could lose a lot of Facebook developer time in just building these third-party apps, I'm saying less and less that's, that's not relevant, it's not important, we don't need to spend this time developing these custom apps for Facebook because they're so difficult to get in front of users who are really interacting with your brand, probably within their news feed and the posts that you that you send out daily or multiple times a day. Um, you don't need to stress about apps as much anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if they're gone completely in an, in an, an upcoming iteration. The group. The group looks very similar to a brand page. What is the difference between a group and a brand page? Well, a group isn't a brand uh, as a holistic view. Uh, it's sort of like, what is a page, really? But semantics-wise, a group can be any... Uh, any selection of people that come together around a topic, often obviously very good for study groups, good for events if event page doesn't make sense. Uh, what's great about an event, a group page is the members can be managed so we can have a closed private group. Pages are always public in nature. Uh, we have groups set up for our classes here at George Brown College. Uh, you can allow people in and out as you need to, but then you still have all the functionality that a page has with regards to posts, adding a photo. What's interesting on the group page that you can't do at um, a brand page is add files, which is helpful for studying or collaborative teamwork, and you can also still do polls. So asking a question, uh, getting people to vote on, on a like-minded answer, we can run that through a group, uh, but you can't do that on a page. Here's my shameless plug to join our group. Uh, so there is a Facebook group designed for this Facebook marketing class in particular. The URL is here. I will also link to it in Blackboard so you can click through. I hope you'll join us in the Facebook group and chat there in addition to chatting on Blackboard. Because this class is about Facebook marketing, we should have our Facebook marketing discussions there. So we've gone over the profile page, the brand page, the group page, and then there's the event page. Events are, of course, a time and date. They're um, a moment in time, a place. Uh, some of the key functionality for an event, yes, it has a cover photo, but no thumbnail. We have what I love about events. It pulls in weather based on the date and time, if we have it, and then a nice map link uh, of the location of the event. You have a mini feed uh, or wall as well and can pull right within the event. So if you're trying to pull, say, what does everybody want for the event? Food trucks or food stations? Everybody who's attending the event has access to vote on that poll. And that content goes out through the news feed as well. Uh, and then events can be completely public or completely private and invite only or secret events uh, depending on um, your admin settings. Now, there are some people who use events to get the word out, sort of in a way they probably should use groups, but they're using an event to gain support. So in this case, this is an old example now, but I use it because I like sort of the date context around it. So you can see um, somebody set up this event called All Against Ford's Cuts Picnic, Thursday at 930 and then we have 1,400 people attending. You can see that on the left-hand side of the snapshot. Now, 1,400 people didn't necessarily unite against Ford's cuts, but what they wanted to do in this, the intention here was to put up an event that asked people to unite around a cause and then get them to say, I'm attending, so that that information, Amanda's attending all against Ford's cuts, goes out through to my network, lets people know that I am against Ford's cuts at City Hall, and I don't actually have to be physically present at an event at a date and time. So sometimes we see this sort of like activism, this support generating that comes out of events. It's kind of a sideway use of events, but it does happen. Um, you should know that once an event is once an event is over, it's automatically archived from the Facebook list, so you won't see it if you search. Though if an event is set up from a brand page, you can go back and look at past events. Um, but they do get automatically archived once the date in time has passed so really if you're trying to build support and act you know at an activist level long term you should really set up either a page or a group 
So I just ran you through at a really high quick level, feel free to rewind if it makes sense to you, uh, the difference between brand page, event page, and groups. And so I would say this isn't required homework, but if you're trying to think about what's the difference, why does this matter to me as a marketer, I would take some time at the end of this lecture to think about this example. Imagine that you, you have a classmate and they're planning a 50 year high school reunion for over a thousand people. And this reunion is happening far in the future, say December 2016. What tool would you recommend that this classmate build? Should they do an event page for that moment in time, knowing it's going to archive after the event? Does it make sense to build a brand page that's completely public, has all of those cover photo elements and thumbnail and, and the ongoing news feed? You also can build events from a brand page on behalf of the brand. Should it just be an ad to promote it and, and no permanent Facebook presence at all? Or should it be a group that comes together with administer uh, with people who can administer the page, the files, the ability to poll, and the ability to potentially be public or private? In the case of this high school reunion, what do you think makes the most sense? I'd love to hear your comments uh, in the Blackboard discussion board. And even just for yourself, take a few minutes to digest the lecture and the differences between all of these and then think for yourself what would you build as a Facebook marketer. When we talk about what can we build on Facebook, what I love to see is movements. Uh, so one story that I think is so fabulous is Humans of New York. Uh, Humans of New York, as you may know, was uh, it started as a Facebook page. A photographer walking around uh, Toronto, <laughs> walking around New York, uh, capturing pictures of inspiring New Yorkers and would put up a picture of the day with some sort of quick comment and very quickly momentum built around these photos and this photographer and many subscribed. You see here we've got 93,000 people liking this particular Yoda and the Force baby photo. Uh, we've got 9,000 shares out to the walls and tons and tons of thousands and thousands of comments. So massive, massive engagement around these daily photos that people really identified with. But from that, and this is really where the magic of Facebook starts to open up, is that it wasn't just a daily photo grab. What we see is that it started to engage the people behind all of those likes and shares and created a real life movement. So we see here this campaign, let's bring Richard home. We have this photo that uh, the human of humans of New York photographer had captured uh, of this family. And uh, when he was taking the picture, he sees uh, this family needed money to bring uh, their adopted daughter's brother into the country but they just didn't have the money to bring in Richard the brother from Ethiopia and so the humans of New York community came together to fundraise the original target was $26,000 the the uh, adoption cost and the Facebook community raised well above that at 83,000 US dollars to help and this is all from photos and engaging stories and just this massive network of people who were inspired by the Humans of New York Daily Posts and they came together, the crowdfunding Indiegogo campaign goes up, the money was raised uh, and everybody wins. Uh, really one of those inspiring stories that talk about the power of social media and remember that social media and marketing and all of this brand and, and nonprofit and activism campaigns that we're building is really just about bringing people together around a like-minded cause, issue, or idea. Uh, and in this case, I found it to be a really inspiring and lovely one. Now, when we talk about lovely and inspiring movements and building momentum on Facebook, one thing to note is that this idea of organic reach. So we publish a photo by Humans of New York, and then we get 93,000 people to tell their friends and like it and see it. More and more, it's difficult for brands to do that organically and for free. Uh, Facebook's whole business model and part of the reason for all of their success and dollars and expansion through that Facebook family is that uh, there's an algorithm, which we're going to discuss in this class. And the algorithm determines which content gets shown to which users at what time based on the relevance that Facebook deems that content item is the user. Is it relevant? Is it important? Is this image something that this user is likely to click on and likely to share? Uh, in order to work with the algorithm, 
uh, and in order to ensure that you actually reach your targeted audience, Facebook is really moving towards a pay-to-play model, meaning that you really need to have some dollars as a brand to pay to have your content shown. Now, it doesn't mean you're paying to see, to have your Facebook content shown to anybody. It's you're building ad campaigns that target specific users based on the interests they've defined, based on their life milestones, like getting married or being engaged or newly, a new parent, you know, within the first six months versus a parent that's uh, had a baby six months or later. Um, and that hyper, very valuable targeting now costs a pretty penny. Still cheaper than Google AdWords um, and incredible, incredible insights that you can learn about your audience by using Facebook ads and Facebook targeting. Uh, but just know that building an organic brand page where you set up a group or set up a brand page and then try to get a movement of, of a million or, or five million people um, is increasingly difficult without some ad dollars behind it to really target the right people. And so now you're saying, what? Who? Targeting ads? Facebook business? This is a lot, a lot of information. I agree. It is a lot of information. And by the end of these seven weeks, you're going to have distilled all of this information into a strategy that you can summarize for your project. So I want every single person who takes this class to be prepared to build. This is a class where you do work. I'm going to help you provide guidance, and I'm so excited to work with you to build an awesome campaign. But you are the one building the brand. You're building the idea and the momentum, and you're reaching your audiences. And as your major assignment, and a big, huge chunk of 30% of your final mark is in a two-page summary, social media strategy, specifically targeting, mark, uh, targeting Facebook, that will include a description of whoever that audience is, uh, your intended reach in terms of how far you expect this momentum and content that you're developing to go, the ad budget that you know you need, to really pay to play in the Facebook space. So you need to think about ads and we'll talk about ads and pricing and how much is really needed to gain momentum here. Uh, what's the content strategy? So is it images? Is it Facebook plus Instagram? Is it links? Is it videos? Is it all of the above? And how will you talk to your audience on Facebook? Is this uh, a hyper use of exclamation points? Are we funny? Are we telling jokes? Are we emotional? Are we entirely business? Are we driven by revenues and cost per acquisition? The voice is really important to this two-page strategy. So I hope that, and I'll learn for uh, from your discussions this week, who you are and where you're coming from, but I want you to leave with a real strategy that you can hand to a real client or real employer or real prospective employer. Uh, so take this seriously as you think about uh, that two-page strategy that you need to do for the end of this course. As promised, you will build in this class. So our approach, um, my approach is I've built this lecture. I've taught Facebook uh, for many, many years, since 2011 at George Brown College. So I've run through many, many years of iterations of this course. And what I found is the most successful is when students actually get into the platform and start building. Even if the project you build has no legs after this course, you will learn best by playing with the tool, working out the bugs and the kinks, and asking questions. Each week I will assign you an activity based on the lecture theme, also known as homework. Uh, each one of those assignments will be worth 10% of your final grade um, and it will help to drive your overall execution mark or execution uh, evaluation. So if you're saying, what is it exactly that I build? I don't know. This is my first time in Facebook. I'm currently unemployed. I don't have anything I can build. There are lots of things you can build. You can build out your own personal presence through a brand page as a personality. You could get in touch with your friend who owns a restaurant or a startup and you could run an event for them and, and publish that through Facebook. Uh, you could do your friend's freelance photography business that really should have a Facebook page but they just haven't had the time to get to it. Or you could expand your reach out to nonprofits. There are so many across the province, across the country, who need social support, and that beautiful strategy would be so valuable to them as uh, a return on their investment by sharing their assets and their time with you, um, that I would say there's no shortage of nonprofits that you could reach out to to help and build or enhance their existing Facebook presence. Uh, so this week's weekly activity as a step one, uh, and you're going to have them all throughout this course, um, is to... Define the scope of work. 
Who is your client? What are you going to build? Figure it out and tell me. I want to hear a high-level description of this Facebook campaign. Are you building from scratch or are you um, uh, modifying and enhancing an existing Facebook presence? And then I just want to know from your world, what excites you about building on Facebook and what do you see as a clear area of risk as you get involved in this course? Uh, what are some key considerations that we should talk about uh, as we start this journey together? My advice to you, if you really want to get the most out of this class, get into Blackboard and participate. Critique, comment, and offer insights to the posts you see from your classmates, and then expect that same level of participation back. So if you're stuck on a campaign idea and you're not sure, should you post picture X or picture Y, post it to the group and ask what they think. I am not the one who's replying. I expect you to talk to each other, and I will guide and provide insight as we go. Um, and some of those discussions make sense on Blackboard, and maybe they make sense to just bring to the Facebook group. The Facebook group has past graduates of this course in it as well, so you might get some expertise from them as well. Uh, so consider which platform makes sense to post, but I would say for most course-related questions and participation, stay within Blackboard. Uh, and I can tell you that I've seen many students go on to not only be employed after they took my class, but to build beautiful pa Facebook brand pages for their business, whether it was a store and cafe, uh, a professional uh, business page for a DJ, somebody who built out their pages uh, for Rogers, an employer, to build their own freelance communications company. I have some students that have done some really glorious things with Facebook, and I'm happy to report that you will be there too soon enough. I look forward to meeting you uh, online, virtually, and on Facebook, and we will talk soon. Take care. Be well.